Oh, what you guys? Uh, today we're finally going to be doing a uh, a staples um, for uh, trainers out of supporters, stadiums, that sort of thing. Uh, I had a comment on uh, one of the videos um, just recently, and uh, they're like, hey, you need to do this. And I was like, hey, you're right. So, uh, whoops, sorry that I was so lazy. Uh, tournament season just gets really busy, so I'm glad that I have some extra time finally, so I don't have to worry about regionals and nationals and that sort of thing. All that I've left is worlds, um, which should be more important, but you know, hey, been there, done that, got the t-shirt. Uh, so today we're going to go over stables. Now, it's really hard to go over stables for items, trainer supporters, and that sort of thing. Uh, because it's hard, you know, I can point at a card and be like, hey, that card's, like, really good. Um, I can say stuff like, um, I'm trying to think here. Um, wow, I am blanking. Uh, I'm trying to think of, like, stuff that's, like, not in a lot of decks that I sometimes use. Okay, okay, Pokemon Center, for instance. That's a great card to use. Pokemon Center, the, the base set printing. The one that says heal all damage from all of your Pokemon and uh, remove all energy that's attached to those Pokemon. It's a max potion on every single one of your Pokemon. Now, I can say, hey, that card's like really good, but it's not good in every deck. There's decks that like really hate using that card because you're like, oh, if all my stuff's damaged, I lose all my energy and this is like really precious, I don't want to do that. Uh, so unless you can like abuse movement in that situation, Pokemon Center is not needed. Or if you don't, if you are playing a deck that doesn't attack, attach a lot of energies, uh, stuff like Jump Bluff, stuff like Gyarados, that sort of thing, uh, then Max Potion is almost just going to be better because you don't have to run into awkward situations, right? Like you don't have to be forced into discarding energies you don't want to be discarding. You know, there's weird sort of things like that, so I can point to stuff like that. I think that was a good example. I don't know. EXP Share, that's a good one. Uh, EXP Share, that's a good card, and it's really good in U150, especially when you attach two cards. Uh, but there's a lot of decks that just don't use it. Um, so, bear that in mind when I'm talking about all these decks. Um, it's it's just kind of, I'm not saying that these are definitively the best cards for U150. It's just the ones that I personally use the most. I think that's the best way to go about talking about staples for U150. Uh, in terms of items, trainer supporters, that sort of thing. Uh, so the way I composed this list is I took 10 lists, uh, uh, 10 lists that I built initially, and I've been kind of workshopping for the, you know, since I got back in the U150 has always been like a, like a weird side project, like, oh yeah, I built U150, and then I stopped. Oh, I built U150 deck, no one plays. Oh, I built a U150 deck, uh, like, you know, just don't have the time. So there's always been like weird segues, but this time I finally had some other people playing it. I'm investing a lot more time. So I've been playing U150 for about like three years, but now I'm actually getting into it. So the first 10 decks that I workshopped were Magnezone, Jump Bluff, Gyarados, Kingdra, Parasect, Rainbow Road, Bennett, Beedrill, Lost World, Typhlosion, and Fossil Lock. Um, so what I did is I took all 10 of those lists, I wrote out every single trainer, and the following uh, things we're going to talk about today are all the trainer supporters items and stuff that have appeared in five or more of those decks. That's the way I determine what's the most. This stack right here is the one that, all the ones that appeared in ten, this stack right here is nine through five. So if you notice, the the stack with ten in it right here, the, that's a lot of cards. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. You should have counted this before. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 2 cards. 32 cards that I instantly like just slammed it on the table and be like cool let's build a deck I got uh, 60 68 more spots to go so um, without further ado that was 350 for rambling I'm four minutes of rambling I'm really good at rambling if you couldn't tell so to the people that watch these I apologize but it's good content I think if it's not good contact someone tell me to shut up okay uh, Dazzle Machine it's in every single deck uh, I don't think there's any reason to play any other aspect just in general um, Computer search is good, but dowsing is just better in this format where you have so many one ofs and you need to repeat said one ofs. Dowsing machines are a good one. If you find a way to abuse Life Dew or Rock Guard, those are the other two that I would say. Uh, but like Gold Potion is just better alternatives. Uh, uh, Master Ball, you have Luxury Ball, which is like the same thing. Um, so that sort of thing. Uh, if you're playing any sort of weird shenanigans where you're learning like uh, G Booster, G Scope, uh, or any sort of cute things like that, yeah, there would be an instance where you want to play it over dowsing, but 95% of the time, this should be your ace spec. So, there's that. Uh, the Elite Four, these are all the cards that go to Lost Zone when you play them. 100% should be in every deck. 
I once took Goop out of a deck just to be like, oh, I don't think you need it because you should, you can't shut off your own abilities. But then like it lost, it lost that game. Uh, shout out to Grady for that. Um, but yeah, these four should be in every deck, no matter what. Item cards that are in every deck. I find me putting this into a lot of cards. Uh, I mentioned in a different video that you can drop this from a lot of lists. Um, if your opponent is a smart U150 player and knows a lot of stuff, or if you're playing a deck like Gyarados, it shouldn't be in Gyarados. It should be in stuff weird, stuff like Typhlosion, where like Flamethrower is an attack on 50% of the Pokemon in that deck. You know? So it's one of those ones that it is in 10 right now, but I've been dropping it for more and more lists as I've built decks. Um, but it's still in over 50% of the decks I play, and it still will be in over 50% of the decks I play, especially decks that need to go fast, stuff like Beedrill, stuff like uh, Gyarados, stuff like... Um, uh, Beedrill's like the big one, <laughs> I think Beedrill. A uh, Banet, you need to draw into your other Banet. So, that's a good one. Computer Search is in every deck, and this is why you don't play Ace by Computer Search, because you can just play this one. So, uh, you know, no reason not to play this. Discard and draw, search for any card. Yeah. Busted! Um... Uh, Imposter Professor Oaks Invention, you will see this in every single one of my lists. It's kind of a weird one. I don't see it in a lot of other people's lists, but it wins games by itself. To commit 1% of your deck to a card that can win you the game turn 1 is so worth it. Uh, if You know, you get to choose your prize cards in this format, and that's kind of busted. Uh, so wouldn't it be busted then to choose your opponent's prize cards? Like, late game, late game, early game, this card's good whenever. Uh, it's single-handedly won me plenty of games. So, it should be in every deck. 100% should be in every deck. Uh, these two should be in every deck. You get an extra dowsing machine, so why wouldn't you? Uh, you're essentially playing three dowsing effects. These, like, if you're not playing these in your deck, you're not playing U150, right? I'm sorry. Like, there's a lot of cards where it'd be like, oh yeah, if you don't want to invest the, like, one dollar into this, like, don't. Whatever. I don't care. It's not super needed. It's just a thing I like doing. Uh, stuff like Palpad. Not super needed, but it's busted. These 100% should be in every single deck, no matter who you are. Com invest in them. They're not hard to find. This card, you know, if you played Pokemon when you are little, you have this card, and then this card was everywhere when it was out. It was a four of in every deck. These are very easy cards to find. Play them in every deck. There's no reason not to. Literally no reason not to. Fight me. Palpad. It's base. It's like a. It's like a pseudo versus seeker. It's the ways to get back trump card. Um, there's awkward situations in late game where uh, you'll pitch your versus seeker, your three dowsing effects, and like your Marlies, and you have no way of recovering stuff. So your only way of recovering stuff is trump card. But if you pitched it earlier, then you're kind of out of luck. So this becomes like your last resort. Um, every time that I play this card down, I always shuffle back in my trump card and one other whatever I need. Generally my Marlies or my Lysander or uh, Sycamore Chorus. Those are the other half. But this card, like mid, late game, early game, whenever, um, it's just like your, it's like a half versus Seeker, so why not play it? It's super, super good. Uh, Misty's Wrath is a card uh, similarly to Oak that I love. I just like, this card needs to be in every deck, just duh. It's an extra Sycamore for free. 100%. And you can like dowsing for it, so you can just blow through your deck. Uh, Misty's Wrath, that's another thing. Just blow through your deck. Like, whatever. You have to discard five cards. So what? This card, it does get boosted in stuff that doesn't make, you know, mine stuff in the discard. Stuff like Banette, stuff like Gyarados. Um, stuff that can retrieve stuff, like Blastoise, uh, Embor, Magnezone. Stuff that can retrieve energies also doesn't matter. Um, so, it, it seems weird at first, but, like, seven cards is not even 10% of your deck, so, like, just blast through it. Like, come on. And it's like a 50 cent card. Like, this card's, like... What decks were used back then? I know for Alligator played it. I think a lot of cards played this. That's why you decked out back then a lot. Uh, Pokemon Communication, uh, Ultra Ball, uh, two of the best forms of search. Where's my Lux Ball? Oh, did I already talk about Luxury Ball? Luxury Ball must be a weird nine. I don't know what deck it's. Yeah, it's it's over there in the nine stack. I don't know. That might be a mistake because it should be in every deck. Maybe it's not in Lost World. No, it should be in every deck. I don't know why Luxury Ball's sitting over this deck. But, uh, cards that can search for any Pokemon in your deck are going to be good. Um, you're always going to have extra cards in your deck to activate Pokemon communication, so it's not a big deal to try to activate that. I should start hurrying up. Pokemon Retriever uh, is the best way to recover Pokemon. Uh, it's better than Super Rod. It's better than Night Garbage Run. It's better than all Pokemon... Uh, or, or, the Time Space one. Uh, time Space Distortion. 
best way to recover Pokemon. Uh, if you're newer, you can play Rescue Stretcher, or you can play them both. Like, I should be switching more to playing both Retriever and Rescue Stretcher, but there are decks where I like having Super Odd too. Um, but Retriever and that sort of thing. And two more items left. Uh, win actually, three. Windstorm and Versus Zebra are the two. I've talked about this one already. It needs, like, being able to reuse your supporters. This needs to be in every deck. And then Windstorm is a way to counter the weird stuff. Um, it's just it's like that card that always goes in. It's the 100th card. Like, if I'm sitting at 99 cards, I'm like, oh, do I have my Windstorm yet? I do now. Like, it's not crazy important. You can drop it if you need to. But there are times when you're like, man, I really need to get rid of that Focus Band, or I need to get rid of that Floatstone on Lysane or something. Like, you know, it's a good card. I need to get rid of that Broken Time Space. I need to use Broken Time Space, evolve my stuff up, and then Windstorm Broken Time Space away. Like, ugh. Crazy good. And then the last one, it's the only tool on the list, Floatstone. Ability, uh, uh, ways to move all your stuff around better than Switch because there's just not a lot of item lock and there's no ways that like, things that lock tools out of your hand. So 9 times out of 10 is going to be better than Switch um, just because it's a permanent use. Claydol, I've got two retreat, right? Like, like slap your floatstone on Claydol and then it can never be like stalled. It sucks when it gets stalled. Uh, and now supporters. I don't want to ramble on too much because I have a lot more to go over. Colrus, ways to draw cards. Uh, copycat, ways to draw a lot of cards. Anna is in every deck, uh, Oaks Theory is in every deck, Rocket's Admin is in every deck, these are just like shuffle draw cards, uh, the, the five best shuffle draws, um, you know, if you don't own an Oak and you want to play Shauna, like, that's fine, like, no one's going to kill you for it, if you're looking to optimize, then play this, remember, U150 is good versus better, Shauna's good, don't get me wrong, Oak is just better, so, play that. Uh, those are shuffle draws. Sycamore is in 10, but Juniper is in 9, because there's one deck, I can't remember what it was, that I'm like, I don't know if I should be blasting through this deck as much. So I played only the Sycamore, but not the Juniper, but generally you'll see both of those. I think Juniper's on the 9 list, so you'll see them both, because blasting through decks. Good. Uh, recovery, you got Marley's Request, you got Trump Card. Um, this one might be a little bit interesting, because it, you don't see it in a lot of formats. And when you read it, it's really not that great, but late game Marley's, and you bring out an item finder and a uh, junk arm, they, you know, it's basically just an extra one of those. So it's one of your best recovery options. And then trump card, like, duh, it's busted. It should be in every deck. Uh, you got some more search here. Oracle, because clay dolls in every deck, it's basically just search your deck for any two cards. Uh, Karina, to get said clay doll. Clay dolls in every deck, so why wouldn't you play Karina? Just kind of makes sense. It's like actually Skylar. Lysander's in every deck. If Gust of Wind's busted, then Lysander's also busted. So play this. And then these are the two ways to search out Pokemon. Uh, nine times out of ten, uh, this is all you need. You don't. The other cards that you can consider if you don't have a collector are Bridget, Pokemon Fan Club, um, Lynette's Net Search, Hall on Mentor. Those are other stuff that also search for a lot of Pokemon. But these are going to be your two optimal ones. Um, this early game, this late game. Boom. Those are the two. Moving on to stuff that's in nine decks. Swoop Teleporter is in nine. Uh, it's ways to get stuff off of your bench. Um, you know, to reuse your Uxie later, to get your Lapras out of there. Uh, so you can't reuse your Uxie because it goes to the bench. A really cute play with this in Gyarados is that it's just like Ninja Boy, but the original Pokemon goes to the discard. So if you need extra magic cards in the discard, Swoop Teleporter. Uh, a lot of Pokemon in U150 are 90 HP or lower. Level Ball just seems kind of like a, a natural thing. I can't remember what deck Level Ball is not in. Uh, Fiflosion, maybe? Lost World? Probably Lost World, because Lost World, like, my Lost World deck doesn't have a lot of those, um, ones. Don't know why this is on the 9 list. I really need to go back and look at it, but it should be in 10. This should be in every deck. It's just a master ball. Uh, Muscle Band's only in 9. I know this is not in Lost World, <laughs> because that's not, your goal is not to take prizes in that deck. Um, but, I mean, plus 20 damage never hurt anybody. Uh, and then here's the Juniper I was talking about on 9, and then the only other card that's on the 9 list is Hex Maniac. Uh, I, uh, Goop is on the list, right? Like Goop is on the you uh, the Elite Four. It's busted, so like, come on, makes sense. Same reason last center. Uh, eight list, only four cards. Uh, super odd, extra recovery. There's some decks that don't need the recovery. Uh, there's some decks like Magnezone where just trump card's gonna be enough. Um, so like super odd, it's it's in a lot of decks in tandem with Retriever. So, like I said, it's 8, 8 of 10, 80% of decks. Of the 80% of the decks I played initially, uh, play Super Run. 
And then the other one is uh, Escape Rope, uh, also Warp Point, also Switch, like that sort of thing. I think Switch is on the... Yep, those are coming up. So, just extra movement. You're going to need them in most every deck. Uh, it's kind of weird when I build decks. Um, I, I don't look back at previous ones. So some days I'll be feeling, oh, I need the Warp Point. Then I'll shuffle through my big old stack I have, and I'll find Warp Point. I'll be like, oh, I have a Escape Rope already. Yeah, I don't need it. Or, ah, oh, I'll put both of them in. Like, it's one of those things. Uh, and then the Finesse Supporter Alliance, you have Wally and Teammates. Extra Search for Evolution decks um, that gets around Spirit Tomb. And Teammates, you can Lapras your way for any two cards when you get knocked out. Your Love Ball turns into two cards, right? So you Love Ball for Lapras for Teammates for any two cards. So when you get knocked out, Teammates super good. Uh, next one, these are... I'm losing track. Seven, six, five, yeah, sevens. Uh, they're the Switch and the Warp Point. Um, you know, mobility is always nice. I would always have at least, like, as much as these are on, like, the weird list for, um, you know, kind of in weird spots here where I'm just, like, feeling one over the other, it should, you should always have at least one switch, warp point, or escape rope. One of those. If not two, if not three. Depending on your deck, but you should always have one. You should always have floatstone, and you should always have one of these. Always. Guaranteed. I mean, even if you don't have, like, even if you have nothing but free retreaters, like, getting out of Paralyzed Lock, getting out of Sleep, getting out of Confusion, that sort of thing, you're always going to need that. Uh, if they're playing any sort of, like, weird Snorlax shenanigans or, or a corner, if they, like, corner you into the active, you can get them out with this. So these should be, one of them should always be in every deck. Secret Mission is a great way to blow through your deck. The reason that it's not in every deck is because there are some decks that naturally have low hand sizes, but if you need stuff in the discard or you have a high hand size... Uh, secret mission is going to be the way to go uh, because you're like, wow, this hand's trash. But I have a secret mission, so you just bop and just barf it out in the discard pile and redraw. Uh, another stadium, uh, your second stadium on this list, it's going to be Broken Time Space. It's going to be in most decks. Uh, you know, if you know this format, you know what Broken Time Space does. I know it's not in a lot of decks that I have. Like, it's not in Lost World. It's not in. Oh, when I made the list, it wasn't in Gyarados, but then I put it in Gyarados because I was like, it's really good. Not Rainbow Road. Um, I'm just going to hit this card until I find more stuff to say about it. I mean, like, Broken Times, come on. Come on. Super good. That's my analysis. Expert analysis from Alex Cook, everybody. Come on. Woo! Far from another. Uh, and then your two supporter cards on this tier right here. AZ, like I said. Oh, wait, no. I didn't say it in this video. Uh, Guinea? Okay, so. Sidebar. Uh... Bench space in U150 is so hard to manage. Uh, pretty much because you're going to have, uh, you know, your Porygons, your Clay Dolls, you're probably going to drop an Uxie or a Lapras at some point. You might have your Spiritum or your Dunsparce on the bench, right? And if you have three of those, you only have three other spots to work with. And that's kind of scary, to be honest. Uh, so having AZ to pick up a card, having Scoop up to pick up a card, having Swoop Teleporter, Ninja Boy, that sort of thing, to get some of that, like, oops, I benched too many Pokemon off of your board is super good. Same reason that Skyfield, I think, is on the final. Nope, it's not. Skyfield is becoming more and more... Oh, there it is. Sorry, it is. It's coming up. But anyways, uh, it's another reason that Parallel City is actually like, super underrated in this format, because they're going to parallel your opponent, and if they don't have the Windstorm or the Counter Stadium, you can really put them into kind of some awkward spots. Um, but anyways, that's a sidebar on AZ. It's, an, it, you know, it's also a good heal. Um, I have AZ over Brimies because a lot of these decks were EX focused, but I always have either AZ or Brimies in every deck. And then Lookers is a card that I'm like, it's always like that 101st card. I'm like, ah, this card's good, but, comma, like, it is just a shuffle draw five. Like, yeah, I gotta look at my opponent's hand, but like, you know, there are some situations in U150 where, like, that doesn't kind of matter. It does sometimes. If you like the card, play it. Like, that's the thing. I'm not a fan of it, but if you're a fan of it, play the crap out of this card. So, that does it for that. Tier, we're down to the cards that are in six decks. Um, Bill is in six decks. It should be in ten, to be honest. I don't remember what decks I did put it in. It's one of those things where I'm, like, throwing together a list, and I'm like, oh, I forgot Bill. Huh. Oh, well. Like, drawing two cards at any point on an item card, is just, it's gonna, it helps you thin your deck. And that's, like, half the battle in U150. Here, uh, here you're quick hitting. I should do a video on like quick hitting tips for U150. Um, but uh, uh, oh, don't overbench and and thin your deck like crazy. Like those are like the if that separates bad U150 player, players from good U150 players. I'll give you your top three. Top three uh, ways to be better U150. 
Be careful about your benching. Uh, thin your deck whenever possible. Like manage your resources, thin your deck appropriately, and uh, optimize your deck. Uh, U150 is you know like it's a lot of good versus better. Uh, if you're on that better half, you're just going to inherently be people that don't have the same sort of stuff as you. So optimize your deck, bench space, and thin your deck. Uh, Skyfield, there's a Skyfield on this tier. It's in six decks. It's being put in more and more decks. Then you don't have to worry about one of those three things I just said. Same with Ninja Boy. It's actually being dropped from a lot of lists because I think it's overkill if you have Swoop, uh, AZ, and Ninja Boy. Um, I like it in decks that have some basics. Some big basics. It's nice to get your Spirit Tomb out of there, your Uxie out of there. And then Bayway Search, uh, it's the ways to get around Spirit Tomb. It should be in a lot more decks. I don't know why it's not, but it should be. Um, same with Trevor. Like, Bayway Search, Trevor, that sort of thing. Like, it's your other good search item. Or a uh, good other search supporter that can, doesn't get just basics. And then your last one, last tier. <clears throat> I need a drink here, real fast. I end up talking so much and I get too excited and I talk too loud. So, I apologize. Uh, this last year, these are in that are half the decks. Uh, double colorless energy. It's your best special energy. Um, I think, like, other ones that you can consider as best energy are, like, call energy, rainbow energy, rescue energy, uh, stuff that can be in any deck. But DC, 9, 10, 10, 10 is going to be in a lot of decks. Especially if, like, you're a newer player and you don't have an Uxie and you only have Shaman. Like, pew, double colorless. Items. Battle Compressor uh, helps with the whole thinning your deck thing. But you don't need it. It's not a crutch. Um, in, st in expanded Pokemon, you can play it to pitch supporters. But in this format, supporters are kind of easy to grab anyways because of Lapras, because of teammates, because of a lot of different things. Um, so Battle Compressor is not as needed, but it is needed in decks that need stuff in the discard pile. Uh, stuff like Gyarados. Stuff like Panette. Stuff like... <laughs> Any sort of grass speed deck, jump off Beedrill, because then it activates your revitalizer, like mid game. There's that. Uh, max pushes on a lot of decks. Um, the best decks in U and 50 are the ones that don't get interrupted by any sort of energy removal. So decks that can flood energy or decks that attack for one or no energies are good. And uh, decks like that can abuse max potion. So uh, good to turn uh, two shots into four shots and stuff like that. And then here's the Breeder and the Rare Candy. If you're playing a stage two, you should play both of these. Uh, it just helps you with the consistency and your speed. So definitely should play these. And then uh, the last couple ones here, uh, Twins. Uh, kind of a, a user optional thing. I like it in most decks, but if you don't, you don't have to play it. Same with Skyla. You already have Karina, so you don't need to overkill. Skyla gets nerfed in the UN50 because of the wording ruling, so it doesn't, it doesn't, you can't search for a supporter, can't search for a stadium, so it becomes a little bit worse. Karina is just inherently better. That's why you see Karina in almost every deck in Skyla, and only half of them. And then Sages, it's, it's just a weaker Misty Wrath, but it helps blow through your deck and thin it. So, that uh, that's all she wrote on uh, the the cards that are in over half of the first ten decks I built uh, about two months ago when I got back into U150 for like the third time. Um, if you've been a, a fan of the channel for like since day one, you notice I always just kind of like go up and down with my Pokemon interest in different things. Uh, you know, I'm mainly a standard player. Like I've been to Worlds these last couple of years, and so like. I don't have time to focus on this stuff. I, I miss the good old days where I was a bad player, and during the summer I'd play a, just a crap ton of U150, and it was the best thing in the world. This should be the world's format. This is the best format of all time. Like, it is. Like, far none. So, anyways, I'm getting kind of rambly and stuff. Uh, I gotta do more deck videos tonight, just because, like I said, I'm in a antsy mood. So, uh, there you go. Those are staples. Hope it helped you. If you have any questions, just please, just please ask them. I'll, I'll let you know anything. I'm never, I don't hide secrets. So, uh, yeah. Thanks for watching, guys.